would say that the same, uh, the same things that help any relationship be successful are what has helped CARMS and my relationship be successful. Um, we have uh, certainly a foundation of trust for each, in each other and, and for each other. Uh, there's mutual respect. Um, I respect him as a person and a professional, and I know he feels the same about me. Um, we support each other. I think there's generally a sense with both of us that, you know, the I've got your back kind of thing. Um, if I learn something that I should, you know, feel that I should share with CARM, um, I, I share that. And, and I know he does the same with me. If he hears something that I might want to uh, know about that I don't hear directly or he's concerned that I might not hear directly, we share that information with each other to make sure that we're not going to get tripped up. Um, our goals are aligned. Um, you know, we both feel very passionate about mass transit. We're passionate about what we do and, and for our customers that we support. Uh, we're passionate about growing the business and improving our customers' ridership experience. So that, that, that certainly gives us a very common bond in how we, how we work together. Um, there's a desire for both of us in, in the board chair and the CEO relationships to make sure that we're the best at what we do. Uh, CARM wants to be the best CEO and I want to be the best board chair. We work together uh, internally and directly with each other on that. We work with others to help us in that, whether it's uh, stakeholders who we meet with, um, whether it's attending APTA events or New York Public Transit events, anything that we can do to gain additional knowledge or expertise or awareness that will bring back information to the company and help us to do the best job we can is what we both strive to do. And I think, you know, I, I, I'd almost say finally, we're, we're both committed to good governance. Um, and we work at improving the governance model between the board and the CEO. Um, CARM has uh, staff resources that he allocates to the board committee chairs. And that gives the board the opportunity to, direct, to work directly with some of the senior staff members at CDTA. It helps, um, again, both of those relationships beyond the board chair and the CEO. It helps the senior staff members and the board members be comfortable with the relationship as well. Um, so I, I think it's, it's a general commitment. It's the trust. It's the respect. Um, and Carm and I have known each other for almost 18 years now. Um, you know, I was first, first appointed to the board in 1995. And CARM was, uh, at that time, he was a, a, a direct report to the executive director. And he had active involvement uh, leading one of the board committees at the time. He was the, the liaison to the board committee. And, and he was who we received reports from on, <coughs> on marketing and business development. So we've, we've gotten to grow together. You know, I was first put on the board as a board member. CARM was a direct report to a a uh, prior executive director. Um, he's grown in his career, and and I think I've grown as a board member and a, a leader of the board. So it's been fun to do that together. I think Dave and I uh, share a, um, a passion uh, for governance. Um, and it's a little unusual. It's not a subject that that is is widely written about or. Uh, something that people talk about at cocktail parties, but if you think about it, um, it is what makes many organizations go. So in that, in that passion, we understand that the board is a living, breathing thing. It, it, it needs to be nurtured. It needs, to, it needs attention. Um, far too often, I think uh, some of us make mistakes regarding uh, boards in that we just assume that, well, people will come to meetings and people will read uh, the things that, that we, we send to them in advance and they're capable and able to make good decisions. Um, that just, that does not happen. Uh, in fact, um, 
when you assume that that's going to happen, uh, oftentimes you get into trouble. Uh, Dave and I uh, work at that. We work uh, to nurture the board, uh, keep the board uh, engaged and involved. And, and by the board, I mean the members of the board. Uh, each individual member uh, is important to us, uh, especially to Dave as, as leader of the board. Um, and he oftentimes will point out to me uh, things that I need to pay attention to or hints and reminders about individuals and how, how to uh, keep them engaged and, and frankly what makes them tick, what their area of interest is. Um, it's, it's something that I don't think gets enough attention uh, nationally when we talk about uh, whether it be corporations or agencies like ours, uh, companies like ours, and what makes us all that successful. Um, Dave and I spend a lot of time talking about the board, talking about productivity, talking about success, talking about uh, vision, talking about um, what we want to accomplish, how, what legacy, what, what, what do we want to leave the company with when someday uh, he and I are no longer here. Um, that, that's inevitable, um, but I don't think oftentimes we t spend enough time thinking about it, dealing with it. Um, so that's been very key to our success. It's been key to our relationship. Um, in any relationship, you have to care about the individual. Uh, and I think Dave and I care about each other. We care about we care about CDTA. Obviously, we want CDTA to to be the best that we possibly can make it. But we also care about each other. So uh, I, I want Dave to be successful. I want the chair to be successful. And I know I know. 100% how much Dave has invested in me uh, personally and professionally. Um, so if you care about each other, you care about the company, and you realize and understand that the people on the board, the members of the board, um, deserve attention and respect and concern, uh, and you provide that. Uh, we've opened, you know, frankly, we've opened the organization to our board members. Um, obviously, we, board members don't want to dabble in the day-to-day -day things, but they want to feel that the, the organization is open to them, um, uh, welcoming and inviting. Um, and that I think at the end of the day, it has resulted in a solid organization, a good governance model, uh, common sense, straightforward decision-making. Um, honestly, it doesn't get any better than that, and I, I think the relationship is what builds that. Very happy about it. It's not something that Carm and I have to force to happen. It, it happens naturally, and I think that's a wonderful thing that, that goes back to the topic that we were just speaking about. Um, our comfort level with each other enables us to, to, to distinguish the roles pretty simply between board chair and CEO. Um, there are a lot of things that we do together in public. Um, if there is a, a, a media event, uh, generally, CARM offers me the opportunity to speak at that event. If I can't attend it or I'm not able to speak, uh, he steps in and, and he takes the lead role for the authority. Um, just yesterday, we had a meeting with a public official, and, and she sat at the head of the table in her conference room. CARM was on her left and I was on her right, and we both had the opportunity to give our uh, thoughts on something that we were meeting with her about, uh, an important community uh, initiative that we're undertaking and we were, were looking for her support. So I think it, it's great that we can give both sides of uh, a position, a board position as well as the executive's position on, on items. As far as operations go, um, I guess I'd consider both of us to be more uh, orchestra directors in a sense. Um, I hate to say that I run anything, but in a, in a general sense, I guess I run the board and CARM runs the company, but yet we both rely on some very key people to uh, essentially do the work that needs to be done. Um, at CDTA, I'm very fortunate that I have a great board that works uh, hand in hand with me and with CARM. Um, they do a lot of the work. It's, it's, uh, I may get credit for it sometimes as the board chair, but the two committee chairs that I have who, who lead the two, the two committees of the board, um, they do the lion's share of the work at the board level. Um, they meet uh, once a month. Uh, they have 
board members on each of their committees. They make sure that the work gets done that needs to be brought to the board meeting. And uh, they're critical assets. Um, but, but you know, the board is a diverse group of people from diverse backgrounds, and we all pretty much pull together to support, um, to support the mission of the organization. All the oars are in the water, and everybody's rowing in the same direction. I think that, um, you know, again, from the standpoint of how we separate, CARM has always given me the opportunity to announce good news when we have good news to announce. Um, and he kind of takes the lead role on um, any bad news that we need to announce. So from, from that standpoint, it helps to, um, it, it, again, it's pretty simple to, to delineate who's, who's doing what. I guess the fortunate thing is that for the most part we have good news to announce, and, and I've had the opportunity to make most of those announcements. Um, ARM makes available his senior staff to work with the board and the committee chairs. Um, there is a chief uh, chief staff liaison. That's one one you know one member of CARM's executive team is appointed to each committee, and they work directly with the board, uh, the committee chair of that committee. Um, and and again, it, it kind of helps to uh, strengthen the relationship not only between the board chair and the CEO, but also between board members and members of the senior executive team. Um, one of my fellow board members is a, uh, an, a U.S. Naval officer, and, and he confided in me once that, you know, the best form of leadership might be to decide, delegate, and disappear. So I think, you know, we try to do that to some degree. Um, you know, CARM invests in his senior staff, and, and as long as the mission of the organization is trickling down through the entire organization, I know that he relies on his executive team to implement a lot of the board decisions that go through the organization. And at the same time, um, I use my board committee chairs and, um, and my other board members to help out in making sure that the information that the board ultimately acts on is getting vetted through the committee and that we're having the right discussion. So uh, that separation of duties um, and delineation has been pretty simple, but it, a lot of that simplicity is based on the trust and the respect and the support and all of the things that we talked about in the earlier question. Dave and I have, have worked um, actually long and hard on, on Understanding the various roles in 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 our company, uh, but most specifically the role of the board chair, the role of the CEO, and then sort of the people who report to us, um, because it's very easy for that to get away from you. And by report, I mean in in Dave's case, the, the board members, and in my case, senior staff and and support staff. Um, it works very, very well for us, uh, based as Dave has said a lot on trust um, and, and per, our personal relationship. But it really, um, when you really step back and look at it, it doesn't happen by chance. It doesn't happen by accident. We've really thought it through, understood that his role and my role, uh, although to some people look very much the same, are very, very different. Uh, and we use each other. Uh, we use each other, we use the roles that we're in uh, to help each other and to help the organization. Um, a prosperous chair, a happy chair, uh, 99 times out of 100 has to be a, ha a prosperous CEO and a happy CEO. A prosperous CEO and a happy CEO usually is, is a healthy staff and a, and, a, and a productive organization. So we've mapped this out. Uh, we have a lot of this in writing. Um, that, that talks about the role of the CEO and the role of the chair. Uh, our governance model uh, focuses a lot of time and attention on these issues. Um, it, it, it just can't be left to um, invention on the go. You know, what is your role? Well, gee, I don't know. Your role can't change week to week. Uh, if, if Dave is going to be the spokesperson for the organization when good news happens, that has to be clear. Our public relations people, for example, clearly understand this, this dynamic. They're going to go to the board chair and talk about 
Dave, how would you like to be quoted for this story? Dave, how would you like um, the board to be positioned in this initiative? Uh, that doesn't happen by accident. That's a lot of work. Someone has to clearly communicate to the public relations people how that's going to happen. That's my job. It's my job to make sure that the staff understands how we're going to position the, the chair, how we're going to position the board, how we're going to announce uh, initiatives, how we're going to portray our vision for the future. Um, it's too easy to get uh, hooked up in who you are and what your role is and just assume that your staff is, is with the program. Um, a lot of work, a lot of time, a lot of effort. It's delicate work as well um, because it, 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 to some people you're, you're bordering here on, on ego issues. Uh, there's nothing egotistical about understanding who's going to be quoted in the story, who's going to be the lead, how you're going to work with stakeholders. Uh, to some organizations that might be clumsy, but Dave and I clearly understand that we want to be together. We want to be out in the public. We want to, we want to be a team. Uh, we also bring board members with us. Our, our board is um, somewhat unique in that they represent counties in our service area. So if we're in one county making an, making an announcement or working on an issue, we sure as heck want those board members who represent that county with us. Oftentimes, they have relationships with business leaders. They have relationships um, with elected officials. But even those decisions are not left to chance. It's, it's a quick check-in with the board chair. Hey, what do you think of this idea? I think, I think we would get a lot more yardage out of, out of this if we, if we brought our two board members from that county along. Um, but again, back to the whole trust issue, we trust each other. Um, we have experience in, 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 in this issue. Uh, we have experience with transit. We have experience with CDTA. So we build on experience and trust, and we've built a pretty successful relationship. Well, for Dave and I, change and progress is, has become a vehicle to work together. Uh, we use progress uh, initiatives, uh, change issues um, as, as ways to work closely together or more closely together. A couple of examples, um, a couple of years back, the board adopted a development plan to guide uh, how our services are designed. Um, we needed to get back to uh, aligning our resources to customer demand. What do people want? What do people need from us? And, and Dave and I um, focused on community outreach. In order to get that done, we needed to be actively engaged with, with our community. And community is a pretty broad, um, broad term because it's not just elected officials or business leaders. It's, it's shop owners and, and, and major employers and, and ultimately the customers. So our service redesign project um, involved the community and was, was pushed by our board. Um, and Dave worked with our board, with, uh, with, with myself and our senior staff, worked with our board to get them to understand why it was critical that the community be involved in the system redesign. So using that, we redesigned, we redesigned our network. Uh, we've made it more productive. We've increased um, our ridership. Um, frankly, we've increased it to record levels. We just finished our year uh, with a boarding count that is the highest it's been in 30 years. So Dave and I then transitioned from system redesign to, to, to our, what we're calling an innovation platform. And we now have a number of major initiatives in our innovation platform package that we're working on. All of those have components of community input and outreach. We've involved uh, our board members. Board members now, thanks to Dave's work, uh, board members now are part of our presentation to communities. They're with us uh, arm in arm, making presentations to communities about things now that we want to do. And, and Dave has really set the bar uh, high for, for me, high for the organization, has asked us to, to think of new ways um, to do things, new ways to generate revenue, and it's all a product of our partnership. We trust each other again. We know what the organization is capable of. Uh, and what we're doing now is pushing the organization, uh, raising the bars of expectation, 
and, and now have a fully engaged board, a fully engaged staff who come to work really pleased because the organization expects more. Uh, what we're finding uh, through our partnership, Dave and I, the more you ask of people, uh, the more they will produce. If you set the bar low and, and don't expect a heck of a lot, that's probably what you're going to get. But our partnership has now produced a board that wants to do more, a staff that wants to do more, and an organization that is doing more. Uh, All-time record ridership, um, uh, an open door with the community, uh, and an innovation platform of projects that's taking us into areas that five years ago we never would have dreamed of. Uh, and that's really, a, um, at the end of the day, when I go back and look at it, it's really a result of the partnership between Dave Stackrow and myself, a really productive CEO board uh, chair relationship. I think you know one of the one of the things that we did shortly after I became chair about a year ago. Um, Carm and I recognized from, uh, quite frankly, input from some of my fellow board members that we needed to revisit how we operate among ourselves at the board table. We've been using a governance model for about a decade where we have essentially a three committee structure. We have a governance committee. We have a performance oversight committee, which essentially addresses all of the operations of the company. And we have a planning committee, um, which deals with all of the, the necessary planning items, budgeting, uh, procurement, um, planning for the future on, on any major initiatives. What was happening was that some of our meetings were starting to drag on um, we had some members who were not able to attend or, or chose not to attend. Uh, meetings were not ending at a time that was allowing other people to schedule things after meeting times. Um, and, and often we would get off on tangents where what we were discussing had nothing to do with the agenda of the committee. So Carm and I set about um, working to pull together a retreat that was only four board members and the CEO. And we hashed out in, in about a half a day session, we hashed out some rules of the road for all of us going forward. Um, we revised, uh, tweaked uh, the committee job descriptions, which really hadn't been updated at all in almost 10 years. Uh, they were working, so there was no reason to change them. But again, it was an opportunity for the board in uh, addressing some of its other issues uh, to, to, to update things to make them more relevant for the current times and the current board composition. And Carm and I worked together to pull that retreat together and make it successful. Um, board, the board operations were affecting Carm's ability to run the company and to manage his senior staff and other staff members. Uh, there were times that, uh, you know, we would have people in our audience and we would be giving mixed signals to staff as far as what the direction the board was going to take should be. Um, some, you know, some of the staff members felt that they needed to respond based on one board member's comments at a board meeting or a committee meeting. Um, even though it wasn't direction coming from the board, uh, it, it was a sense on, on uh, CARM's executive staff's part that, that, you know, they might need to take action or they might need to come up with answers. So we, we went from a period where there was a little bit of confusion. Um, I hate to use the word that we were um, dysfunctional, but, but we were definitely not operating at our best. And as a result of that uh, retreat that we worked together to come up with an agenda, and then to follow up with what the consensus agreements were coming out of that, uh, that has certainly helped us to be uh, operating in a better manner. I think that staff is a little more comfortable now with the board. Um, we, we, we did get off, off track a little bit. Um, and that happened over time. It happened with uh, changes in board leadership, and, and that wasn't a, a good thing or a bad thing. It was just change. It happened with new board members coming onto the board. 
possibly we didn't you know, we didn't go through as much of a training session with some of our new board members as we could have, and that that might have been helpful in making sure that we were all staying on track. But um, it was it was an initiative that we both agreed on early on. Uh, we addressed it within a couple of months of my becoming chair, and I think that the rules of the road that we adopted have been followed pretty well. Uh, and again, that I think has helped to give a clearer message as to where the board's coming from or where the board wants to head to both CARM and his senior staff members. Uh, if we're not in sync, uh, if we're sending mixed messages, it doesn't help anybody because nobody knows which way to turn or which way to run. So. It's um, it's something we've worked on. It's something I'm proud of, and and again, I'm very proud of my board. I have great board members. It's just that we were all kind of uh, going in different directions at times. I don't think we were all unified, and I don't think we were all in sync. And uh, some of the changes that we've made to the governance uh, platform have helped to uh, realign all of that. 